From Real Ghost Stories Online, I am Tony Bruski, and welcome to another episode of our show. Thank you so much for joining us, wherever it may be, whether it be through iTunes. If you're there, thank you so much. And would you mind doing us a little favor? Give us a couple stars, a little positive review if you like the show. That helps us grow. Stitcher, same thing. A little review, a little star action, that helps us tremendously. It helps us get more uh, good ghost stories into the show and helps more folks find it. YouTube, lots of followers there, up to about 10,000 subscribers. So thank you so much if you're listening to us through that channel or wherever it may be that you are finding us. Thank you so much. Your love, your support of the show, you sharing the show helps us grow. So a little bit of support. Uh, the two seconds it takes you to give us some stars or a review uh, really, really, really goes a long way. It is time well spent. So we thank you uh, tremendously uh, if you would uh, mind doing that. Love putting the show out to you uh, as often as we possibly can and sharing these great stories that you guys write into us uh, and call into us. Uh, and uh, we can only do it with uh, with your support and with your help. So please uh, take the two seconds to do that if you love our show. Got a bunch of letters for you on today's show. Some real spooky, spooky stories. And of course, if you have a real ghost story you'd like to share with us, you can do so at any time. You uh, just go to our website at realghoststoriesonline.com. Click on the Tell Us Your Ghost Story link. And we may just uh, may just take that ghost story and share it. Uh, on a future episode of the show. So please, uh, please do write in. Or you can even call in your real ghost story to us. You uh, just pick up the phone, dial 855-853-4802, 855-853-4802. And uh, share your ghost story with us that way, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let's get into our first letter that was written to us. This was written into us from... Vivian writes in, My mother is 74 and a very no-nonsense woman. Level-headed, direct, all business, and does not believe in ghosts. Last year, when we were chatting on the phone about a day-to-day -day stuff, she said, Something strange is happening in my house. Coming from my mother, who never thinks anything is strange, it really caught my attention. My mother still lives in my childhood home. This home was built in 1863 and 1864 and was owned by the same family until my parents purchased it in the early 1970s. I grew up in southwest Missouri in a small farming community. It's a huge rambling house that sits high on a hill and is surrounded by woods and farmland. As a child, I loved this home except for the staircase and a small hallway. I'd run down the hallway and up the stairs as fast as possible because I always thought someone was hiding there. Now I'm an adult and in my late 40s, and I still move as fast as possible through this part of the house. But now back to my mother's story. She told me that she was being woken up every night by someone walking down the stairs, pushing in the hallway and then walking towards the kitchen, and then the footsteps would stop. She'd get out of bed and walk out to see who or what it was, and upon finding nothing, she would go back to bed thinking she was imagining things. After two weeks of things going on like this, things changed a little. She was woken up one night by someone shaking her awake and asking her, Who are you? It was a woman's voice. She said it was very clear and was said in an impatient tone. Since I know my mother so well, I believed her without hesitation. I told her that tonight when she goes to bed, say out loud, I'm going to bed now, and I do not want you to wake me up. You're disturbing my sleep, and that's not nice. I love this house, and I'm happy to share it with you if you do not disturb me anymore. That night, she said exactly that, and it never happened again. She's sleeping soundly, and the spirit seems to be content with that arrangement. My mother still to this day says upon going to bed, you are welcome here, but I'm going to bed now, so please be quiet. Even now, when I talk to her about it, she will not call her home haunted or even say she has a ghost. She just calls it an experience and she calls it an odd experience and leaves it at that. For me though, her experience is validation that I am not imagining that the hall and stairs in this beautiful old home are haunted. Vivian, thank you so much 
for sharing that story with us. That's interesting when folks end up coming up with arrangements, if you will, with uh, a paranormal entity that's within their property. You hear that more often than not, where instead of just trying to get rid of it with a seance or sage or some sort of ceremony of some sort, they just kind of come to some sort of peace with it. And it's not that they're just going to sit there and tolerate it. It's that there's a communication back and forth with whatever it is that is troubling them. It's interesting because in, in some cases that works and in some cases that doesn't work all that well. And that kind of goes back into the thought process of there are some entities that maybe we can communicate back and forth with, conscious entities, and then there's some entities that we cannot communicate back and forth with or simply the ones that have no regard for our feelings or emotions. It makes you wonder of all the different levels of uh, spirits or ghosts on the most general sense of terms that exist out there. Are there people who were once living that are now ghosts that are also sharing our environment that want to interact back and forth and are happy to oblige when we ask them not wake us up in the middle of the night? Then are there simply repetitive energies that are just going over and over and over the same things they did in life, but maybe not conscious, but literally just energy repeating itself. And then there's a whole other realm of darkness, a whole other realm of demonic forces that may interact with us, but may not necessarily be the most open to the idea of not waking us up in the middle of the night, maybe more open to, oh, you're telling me not to do this? Maybe I should start doing that more often. That's what I think some of those things are uh, are more apt to do so you probably if you're going to interact if you're going to talk to the entity uh, you may want to have a good grasp on what type of entity that is you are interacting with because i would venture to say that you may be asking something uh not to interact with you that may be the door to interacting even more if you have a real ghost story, we'd love to hear it. Please write into the show. Just go to realghoststoriesonline.com, click on the Tell Us Your Ghost Story button, and then write in your ghost story. Or like I said, you can call in anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, to our toll-free number at 855-853-4802. And on there, you have about two minutes to leave your story. If you want to leave a longer story, a lot of folks just call back a second time. And uh, continue on. So feel free to do just that. And we will share your stories on a future episode of the show. Uh, another letter that was written to us. This one comes to us from Carla. Carla writes, my parents had just bought a new home when I was born. So they were excited to bring me home for the first night. A week after I was born, they say that their neighbor had just had a baby too. And for about three nights in a row, the neighbor told my mom that her baby had been crying all night because of the witch that was flying around. My mom is a type of person that if she does not see anything, she does not believe in it. So after the neighbor advised her to put garlic in the room, my mom didn't do that because she just thought she was crazy. My crib was connected to their bed so she could check on me if I needed anything. But this specific night, she says that she was dead asleep. She never sleep sleepwalks, nor my father. And all of a sudden, while still sleeping, she threw the covers off to my dad and threw herself on the floor on her knees and extended her arms. And she says, I just fell into her arms as if someone had dropped me from midair. She woke up and was stunned to find me in her arms and her knees were all bruised. The following day, they put me in bed. My dad moved a little and felt something between their legs. And to his surprise, I was by their feet. They could never explain that even up to this day, she told my grandma that morning and my grandfather that the witch was trying to take me from them and also advised her to put garlic in all the doors so she finally did and nothing happened ever since, well, at least to me. Then there are, they are certain that their old house was haunted in a way. There are many stories from within the walls of that house. Thank you for that story. Interesting to hear 
the term of uh, of a haunting, if you will, of something that is uh, an unseen entity uh, being phrased as a witch. You know, oftentimes when when we hear of of a witch, we're we're hearing of of a person, of, of a living, breathing human being, at least in today's terms, where they're into witchcraft, dark arts, or, I mean, there are, there are such things as good witches, believe it or not. I actually worked with one once uh, on a radio show. I'm not kidding. I'll, that's another story for another topic, I guess. But, um, you know, practicing witchcraft or, or, or things of that nature, you think of a human being. The witch, I wonder if, if it really was just a general term being used for some sort of dark entity that was in the house, and the, the local people called it a witch. Um, and then the garlic being used. Garlic, interesting. We've been talking about so many spices on the past couple of shows. It's making me hungry. <laughs> I put a little sage in there and some garlic, and then a little bit of thyme and some some nice uh, some nice gray salt. I mean, essentially, we're warding off demons here with turkey seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, take your, uh, your your key spices for Thanksgiving, and that should keep the evil spirits away. I tell you what, if I was a ghost, and, and someone was using these spices around the house to ward me off, it would attract me in. I'm like, all right, these people know how to cook. I'm all about this. Yes, use a little bit. And could you use some some fennel? I, I enjoy that. More Some more fennel. Rub that around the doors, and I'd really it'll tell me what door to go right into. <laughs> You know, I, I wonder. I wonder if, if if different entities. And seriously, I wonder if different entities have different spices, um, or scents, or smells that they're attracted to, or or unattracted to. I'm, and I'm being completely serious here. I wonder if that is is the case. Let's go to another uh, letter here. This comes to us from Laney. Laney writes in, "Hi Tony, I've got some stories you'd like to hear. And if you'd like to contact me via phone, I'd be happy." To share and and lady, you know what? I got your number here. I may call you uh, in the coming months because uh, on our, our Halloween episodes, I want you guys to tell your stories in your own words. So I may give you a buzz. Lady writes, and I live in Appleton, Wisconsin. It's a nice place, uh, and it's nice to see someone from around here uh, that's also doing a show. Uh, I I myself am from that general area. Just for you guys out there, I've talked about that in previous episodes. I grew up in a town called Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Uh, and one of our episodes uh, going through a haunted cemetery actually took place uh, in Appleton, which is about 20, 25 miles away. Anyhow, back to her letter. I'll start at the beginning. I'm currently 17 years old. The first encounters I have experienced start back when I was about three years old. I live in a big two-story house with my mom and dad. The house was rather old, and before we lived there, an elderly couple did. Their names were George and Emma. While they lived there, George had died and Emma had moved out. I learned to walk and talk at a very young age. At two, I was already speaking full sentences. When I was three years old, my mom noticed I would talk to someone when I was alone. At first, she thought I had just an imaginary friend, as so many children do. After a while, she asked me who I was talking to, and I replied, nice old man. My mom asked me if the old man had a name, to which I replied, yeah, his name is George. She never told me about George or any past history of the house until many years later. Now, the basement of that house was another story. I refused to go down there by myself, and I would tell my parents the dark man wanted to hurt me. He was only in the basement, and it scared the crap out of me. I remember the first time I came in contact with him, I was playing on the computer. I had my back toward most of the basement. Suddenly, I felt as if the whole entire room was full of people. I felt cold air all around myself. Suddenly, my whole body was covered in goosebumps. I was frozen in place. I knew if I looked behind me, I would see something I didn't want to. Without looking behind myself, I ran up the stairs in my basement and never went back down myself. If you'd like to hear more stories, I'd be glad to share. I have tons more. I have stories from my current house, from this little town just on the border of Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I think you'd be interested in hearing them. Thank you for uh, for that uh, story. If you have a real ghost story, please let us know about it. You can call in to us uh, at any time. Our direct phone number 
is 1-855-853-4802, 855-853-4802. Or do what she just did and write into us. Go to the Tell Us Your Ghost Story button on our website at Real Ghost Stories Online. And be sure to tell us your ghost story. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button on our show on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube, wherever you may be, may be listening to us. Hitting subscribe will make sure that all of our future episodes make it to you. Another letter being written in, it says, please be advised that the events contained within this short story are entirely factual and have in no way been falsified or, elabor or elaborated upon. It all started 10 years ago. My family and I, my younger brother, mother and father moved to a relatively simple house, a three bedroom uh, semi in a serene leafy countryside of Bedfordshire, England. We had finished unpacking for the most part, and had been taking all the boxes from the delivery van into the specified rooms. All that remained was to bring in those labeled attic, as the entire day had been one long, notorious task. We decided to stack the aforementioned boxes on the landing and then take a break. With all the boxes stacked nicely upstairs directly underneath the loft hatch, the delivery drivers, long gone, our break over, it was time to lift them all on up. My dad, Tet, went first, pitched our little wooden ladder, pushed aside the hatch, and ascended through into the darkness. There aren't any lights up there, so I passed a storm lantern to him. The second it clicked on, he shouted an obscenity and wouldn't want to inflict on your audience, so I won't mention it here. He literally jumped out backwards onto the landing, kicked over the ladder, and narrowly missed the, I would say, at least 12 foot drop down the staircase, which easily could have killed him outright. That said, nothing was injured except for one heavily bruised ego. What did happen? Well, once he had calmed down, I was asked to go and get some bin bags and the dustpan because we had dead crows up there split in two pieces with magnets slithering in the mess all in all it must have been about a half hour later that we ventured back into the loft this time i went first my dad second fully prepared for the gruesome display of guts what we saw next however for me at least is even more chilling there was absolutely nothing there the attic is sealed without any windows or chimney the only way in and out is through the hatch of, I am certain. There have been numerous occasions, including partial apparitions, physical contact, and noises, which have occurred to every single one of my family members individually, which are at a loss to explain the events. I hope this has been of interest to you, yourself, and your audience. Thank you for hearing my story, Sean. Sean, thank you so much for writing in and sharing that story with us. That is a, a very, very creepy tale. And one that you hear of in, I want to say most oftentimes demonic situations, where there's something very dark going on within a home or within a building and dead animals um, are seen. Plain as day, not as an apparition, not as something that, uh, you know, may or may not be there, but plain as day, they are there. And then only to venture back and to have them disappear. I can't imagine going into an attic, opening the door, turning on that light, and then seeing dead crows split in half. That's number one, you're wondering what on earth split a crow in half. It's not exactly an easy task unless you're walking around with a samurai sword cutting crows that are already dead in half. And you have maggots infested. And that is a disturbing thought, especially in a building in a room where there really shouldn't be crows to begin with. And then going back and there's nothing there. I, I don't know. If I was the owner of that house, I don't know that I could stay in that home. That may be right there the reason to leave. But what a disturbing, disturbing sight to see. It goes back, and whenever I hear of the animals appearing and reappearing, or any sort of living entity, I always think back to the Amityville horror and the flies, and the flies in the windows. Or even, you could take that further with the, uh, the Jody the Pig uh, references. Yeah, 
that uh, that were brought up several times. If you have a real ghost story, please share it with us. Also, please subscribe to the show. If you've not done so yet, if you've been listening, maybe it's your first time and you're like, oh, maybe I'll subscribe, and you like the show, please, please, right now, take a moment, press that subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. It also helps us get better rankings, and it helps more people find the show so we can grow, we can get better shows to you, and get more great letters to share with you. The more letters we get, the more frequently we can put out the show. So please do press that subscribe button. Give us a review. Give us some stars, especially out there on iTunes. We really do appreciate it. When I say we, I say, I mean I, because I'm the one that's running the show. And I guess we as a whole, uh, the folks that have been with us from the beginning uh, that love getting the show, we all do appreciate you if you're new to the show. Um, uh, doing just that. Our next letter comes to us from Dante. Dante writes, and when I was two and a half years old, my mother said this very odd occurrence happened and she wasn't the only witness. When we went to the cemetery for a picnic, it was just me, my mom, grandma, and great grandma visiting my great grandfather's grave. The cemetery is huge and it's very difficult to find someone's grave, but they drove around and finally stopped around the area they thought was his grave. And as soon as the car stopped, my mom opened the door I shot out of the car and went straight to a random grave, or so they thought. They thought nothing of it, but then they came over to see me, so I could go with them to search and find my grandfather's grave. When they looked down at the grave I was standing at, can you fill in the blank and you know it's going to happen? It was my great-grandfather's grave that I was sitting on. That was the first time visiting the grave and they had no idea where the grave was. And even if I did visit before, there was no way I'd be able to know where it was if I visited as I was so young. Coincidence? Or was my great-grandfather there showing me his own grave? Very interesting. Thank you for that, uh, that ghost story. It's kind of one of those that makes you think. Especially when you have a child involved. I have a little one. I have one who is uh, who's almost two years old. And there's times where she will look around the room, point at something that's not there, and speak to it. And you just go, huh. Hmm, yeah, but, and I know she has a good imagination. She plays, you know, pretend a lot with her toys, and that's, that's good. But it makes you wonder, do the little ones have some sort of sense that we don't have that eventually goes away that maybe we all have to a certain age a sixth sense of seeing things that are not there the other side if you will and communicate with it and it's completely normal to them they don't know any any better they don't know any different so there's nothing odd about it until you become an adult and maybe sometimes tap back into that sixth sense and suddenly it's very very strange why am i seeing this whereas the little ones it's part of what they've already known. If you have a real ghost story, please share it with us. Pl- press that subscribe button. Please, please do that. Our next letter comes to us from Delena. Delena writes in, When I was around 13, my family decided to move from Tampa, Florida to Roanoke, Virginia. We moved into an old house built around the 20s. During the five years we were there, we lived with ghosts. The first thing we noticed was the smell of a pipe, even though no one smoked. The second thing was the footsteps from upstairs. During times when everyone was downstairs, the third encounter came in the form of a woman's voice saying what sounded like goodbye. This was early one summer morning, and at first I thought this was just nothing. However, after I sat up and waited a few seconds, I heard it again. That was all I needed. I left the room and didn't come back till that night. Even though it took some courage for my brother, after a long while during January when it was extremely cold outside, we had to keep the fireplace on at night and keep our house warm. One would always stay downstairs. One night it was my turn, so just about to lay down, I saw a strange figure in the dining room. It was a medium-sized man with greased dark hair and a mustache, a white dress shirt, black pants with suspenders. His legs went through one of the chairs. He had one hand behind his back and a smoke pipe in the other. He was just standing there staring at me. He stood there for a few minutes before vanishing. I never saw that image again, but the smells and footsteps never went away. That's, that's creepy. That's interesting where sometimes an entity will appear or only once 
appear or make itself known, but still let you know it's there through other means other than just an appearance. It's like it's just wanted to give you that one validation. Like, yep, I'm really here. These are not just things you're you're hearing, they're smelling. This is me. Okay, now you're just gonna hear me forever. You know, that's I guess, you know, I'd rather have some confirmation that I wasn't going crazy. Although, if you only see it once, I guess it kind of makes you wonder even more, are you going crazy? I think <laughs> it's because I, I second guess myself on virtually everything I do. And that would be something that I think I'd be, well, I, I'm pretty sure. So I, have the, I have the video here of it. I have the pictures of it, but uh, maybe I'm just kind of crazy. I should, I should second guess that because that's, that's just how my mind works. If you've not done so yet, please subscribe to our show. Hit that subscribe button wherever it may be. iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Leave us some star reviews. Really, really do appreciate that. Um, that's what helps us grow every single week. So thank you so much. If you've already done that, if you've not done so, please do that. That will help us get more ghost stories and bring you better episodes every single week here at Real Ghost Stories Online. So until next time, from realghoststoriesonline.com, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thank you for listening.